Hello, welcome back. This is Adam Rosen. You're listening to my channel. Um, if you haven't already checked out, I have another uh, social media platform. It's my uh, podcast. It's called Your Knee, Your Health. You can find it on most major platforms. Um, and there's an episode that I put up recently on this very topic, but I also wanted to include this information here because this is a very common question that patients pose to me. They're always concerned, can I do too much? Will I harm myself or harm my knee? And for the most part, the answer is no, but it's complicated because the first question I ask people is, you know, if you're afraid you're going to do too much, what do you mean? And that usually catches them off guard, you know, well, too much. Okay, well, does that mean that you have pain? Does that mean that you have to work hard? Does that mean, are you afraid you're going to pop up in the incision or damage the implant? So you really want to ask yourself, what do you mean by do too much and what are you afraid to hurt? Because that may help lead you in a certain path. And it depends on the patient because one, everybody's pain threshold is different. Um, you may have a very high pain threshold. Somebody may have a very low pain threshold. So we can't just say, if you have more pain, stop. You have to then look at the picture. Where are you at in your recovery? What is your range of motion like? How are you recovering strength-wise? What medications are you taking? You know, I have some people, it's very simple. They've stopped their medication and they're doing therapy and they're saying, am I doing too much? I'm hurting. And they're right on target. You know, they're right where they need to be. And we may simply just say, hey, like add some acetaminophen or add an anti-inflammatory. And that little bit of medication may decrease their pain and symptoms and swelling and they get right back on track so they've lowered their pain threshold. The other issue that comes about is the person that's way ahead of schedule. So this is a person that's the super overachiever, they're pushing super hard, they're on the bike, they're using exercise bands, they're going to therapy, they're working out on their own, and their range of motion is in the top 1%, and they're hurting and having pain. That person may just have to back off 10 or 20%. You're already ahead of schedule. So if you're doing so much and having more pain, but you're ahead of schedule, back off a little bit. You know, pat yourself on the back. You're doing great. Um, but the flip side is uh, somebody may have the same symptoms. Increased pain, swelling, discomfort, difficulty sleeping, but they're behind the eight ball. They're in that bottom one or two percent. They don't have good motion. You know, that's the person that unfortunately may have to push harder. So they may have pain, but because they're not doing their physical therapy as frequently or they're getting more scar tissue, they do have to work harder, which means that they may have more pain, but it's for a good cause. So when we talk about this, again, everybody's different. You know, I have some patients, they typically tend to be these, you know, younger middle-aged men. And, you know, they'll, they'll tell me the story of, oh, I went to therapy and the therapist was cranking on my knee and I was screaming out loud. Now, I don't know if they just like to scream um, or if that was their way of letting out that energy or that pain that they were dealing with, but functionally their knee is doing well. You know, and then I have other patients will say, you know, they were pushing me in therapy and it was too painful. I told them to stop. So it's hard, you know, because that person definitely had pain. Maybe they couldn't tolerate it. But there's that downside that I always explain to my patients that me and our therapists, we don't want to hurt you. And we're not being insensitive uh, when we say, you know, you have to deal with some pain. It's because we know that if you hurt now and we push you, that if you get a good outcome, you'll be happy for the rest of your life. And if you stop because it hurts, but you're still within the normal guidelines of recovery, we fear that you might have stiffness and then pain for the rest of your life. So we would rather somebody be in pain now and have a good recovery and outcome as opposed to being in pain forever. And I sort of use the analogy that... Um, races, like half marathons, marathons, triathlons. If you think about it that way, um, the triathlon analogy that I like to use is that I always talk about three things. You know, we want to get range of motion, we want to get strength, and then we want to get endurance. So if you look at this as a triathlon, the first leg is you have to get range of motion. The second leg, we can work on strength. And the third leg, you can work on endurance. So you don't want to start the third leg until you finish the first leg. So that's really important. But also when we talk about a marathon or half marathon, you want to finish. Again, there will be these overachievers. These are like these super running athletes that you see from, you know, Ethiopia um, that just 
blow everybody out of the water with these record times on these marathons. And I do get these one or two percenters that they come in at a month and it's almost like nothing happened. They have 120 plus degrees of motion, no medications. They'll walk in and say, oh, I played golf last week. That's great. I don't know how that happens. Um, I wish I could bottle it. I can do the same surgery, same rehab, same pain protocols, but some people biologically just recover quicker. Um, if that's you, that's great. But again, if you're in that three, four week period where you're as good as some people are at three months and you're having pain, back off a little bit. You're not going to harm the implant. The other group of people are the big group of people that kind of finish the race in the normal average time. So we will say, you know, two to three months for recovery. And again, you always hear me say, at two to three months, three to four months, most people should be 80, 90% recovered at that point. So you'll still have some pain or stiffness or achiness, but you should be functional and you should have good range of motion. But there's the stragglers. And these are the people that are really struggling they're the people that, you know, don't run by the rest station and grab a glass of water and drink it and keep going, but they're happy to kind of stop and sit down in a lounge chair, lounge chair and get the glass of water and rest. Um, but we want them to get up and go and finish because if you stop at those rest stations, because it's easy at that point, you know, it was hard to get there and the end is still far away and you stop, you're going to stiffen up. And Although you might see the pain diminish then, you're never going to get to the end of the race. And you might not be happy with the outcome at the end of the day. You want to get that finisher t-shirt. You know, you want to show people that you were able to get over this hump and get to that goal. So that's where you have to really look at everything. And this is where your surgeon and your therapist really come in handy. Because, again, the picture that I give to my patients after surgery to show them that their knee bends is one way of helping this fear of am I doing too much because it shows them that you can bend it all the way. You're not going to pop open a stitch. You're not going to break the implant. You're not going to tear a tendon. And that's the first phase to get over, that you're not going to damage those structures. Um, but you may have increased pain or swelling. So this is where you have to look at, again, where are you on that spectrum of recovery? Are you ahead of schedule, having more pain swelling? Just dial it back 10%. Are you stiff and having pain and you're at the bottom of that sort of recovery mode where you're like the bottom 10%, even though you're stiff and even though you're having pain, you actually may have to push harder. So that's where the coach comes in handy. Your friend, your running partner is there kind of pushing you along with this race going, I know it hurts, but keep going. You can do it. And what most people find is that once you push a little bit more, you start to loosen things up and the pain actually gets better. So that fear that you had of I'm having pain and I'm stiff, I don't want to push harder because I'm going to damage something. Most people find that once they push a little bit harder, just for a couple days or a couple weeks, the pain actually starts to decrease. The range of motion starts to increase and your recovery starts to accelerate. So again, it's not a simple yes or no or right or wrong answer as far as can you do too much. Um, I've never seen anybody in therapy do permanent harm to their knee or their implant. I've had people fall in the recovery and do damage. Um, they've usually split open the incision. I've never seen anybody fall and break the implant. But in that early recovery period, more often than not, if you talk about fear of doing harm, if you do less, the harm may be that you get scar tissue and stiffness for the rest of your life. Whereas if you do too much and you have some pain and swelling and dial it back 10%, you might have a rough week, but you'll be right back on target. Um, so check with your therapist, check with your surgeon. If you're someone that's in this ballpark of, I'm um, afraid I'm doing too much or not enough and I'm hurting or I'm stiff or I'm swollen and get their input on your point in your recovery and where you should be as far as goals to make sure that they can give you the right encouragement and incentive and guidelines so you can get to that finish line. Now, thanks again for listening. If you haven't already checked out, uh, please check out my book, The Knee Book. A Guide to the Aging Knee helps all people like you that are dealing with those questions of, you know, what is knee arthritis? How do I diagnose it? How do I treat it? All the way up through knee replacement, which includes details on what is a knee replacement, how to decide if you need a knee replacement, what are the risks and complications, um, as well as really good details on why recovery is important to obtain a good outcome at the end of the day. So thanks again for listening. I'm Adam Rosen. Until next time, stay safe.